dark. Welcome back, TCS viewers, to a special after dark edition here at the uh, end of the day with the store closed. This is just a good opportunity for Jordan and I to get together and talk about what's on our minds. Mm. And you've called the very first video here, so why are we here? Well, the other day I went out to go just shoot some home video, just like family stuff, right. things like that. Classic stuff. And as I was leaving, I grabbed an RX-10. Now, that's interesting because we've tested this camera before. Very nice still capability, but it does have awesome video capability. It has really good video mm. capability. And it just got me thinking, well, if I'm grabbing this instead of camcorders, and I can grab any camcorder, is there any reason for consumer camcorders to exist anymore? Right. Will a still camera replace them? And that's all we've ever used. For example, like a camcorder I happen to have right here for no particular reason. This is the Canon HFG30, Which very high-end camcorder. Great video camera, yeah. So you're saying you think the RX-10 can make this obsolete? Yeah, they're both the exact same price point, hmm. so I thought we'd run a few tests and find out if there's any reason to go hmm. with a camcorder these days. There are definitely strengths and weaknesses for both, so let's take a look. Okay, so the first thing, sensor size, okay? Right, big difference. I mean. Mine's rocking slightly bigger than a one third inch sensor size, which is yeah. perfectly standard for video yeah, camera. Yeah, that's like a regular this. video camera right. size. I got a one inch sensor in this yeah. thing. So yeah. I put it in burger terms. So here's yours. Oh, it's so small. And this is mine. Right. So yeah, your burger is definitely juicier and tastier and larger. Yeah, but like. yours is more popular worldwide. <laughs> yeah. So what does that mean? I mean, first thing is depth of field. Um, sure. I mean, you've got the larger sensor. That means thinner depth of field at the same aperture. Yeah. So we shot this shot. Same focal length, same mm -hmm. aperture, and you can see totally the depth clearly of field see. shallower on mine. And I just think mine looks more aesthetically pleasing. Well, yours gets to be more cinematic if you want it to be. Yeah. And this always looks like home video. Always. And it will, it will always look like home video, and it can't look like anything except home video. Exactly. Point. RX10. Hmm. Now, while we're on the topic of sensor size, yep. we should talk then about low light performance because sensor size plays a big part. Yeah, generally the rule is if you've got a larger sensor, all For things sure. being equal, you'll get better low light performance. Now, that would normally be true, especially in the SLR world. However, let's consider something here. This is a 20 megapixel sensor because it has yep. to shoot beautiful stills as well. Yes. This is only a 2 megapixel sensor. It's made for 1080p video. Right. Although it's a smaller sensor size, I'm also getting less pixels. My pixel pitch might be bigger here. Well, let's take a look at yeah. samples. We got some samples here. This is a fun party. Film this band playing. Yeah. All hands on Jane. Yeah. CD available on iTunes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what I did is just cranked up the gain as far as it would go okay. on both cameras. Really dark room. I mean, neither of them were properly exposed, even no. brightened up <laughs> as bright as we could get them. And looking at them here, I would have to give maybe a bit of an edge to the HFG30. I was surprised actually in this too. It is a slight hair sharper, but we're talking a very minor difference. It's so eh? minor. I'd say within a third of a stop difference. Neither right. of them look good in this situation. They're hmm. both excellent for camcorders. So though. here's the thing then. The RX 10, if it's really going to replace these things, it's at least as competitive. Yeah, so that whole pixel size advantage is moot. Okay, now I know we're not doing a traditional competition between us here, it's just having a discussion, but I'm going to play devil's advocate because one of the ben benefits of having a small sensor like this is I can put a big zoom range in front of it. Yeah, that's always been the advantage of camcorders sure. historically. So we've got a test here, right? We're going to take yeah. a sample, look we at it. We just ran both of them through their zoom ranges mm. from wide angle right through to telephoto. Yeah. So here's the great thing about this, 20 times optical zoom, you can see it here. I look so sad and dejected, even that terrible burger. You can zoom in and, and really see, see the disappointment in Absolutely. your face. Absolutely. With the RX-10, you're just like distantly, <laughs> little speck off in exactly. the distance. Exactly. I mean, this is great. 30 millimeter equivalent to 600 millimeter equivalent. I mean, that's great for wildlife, great for travel, that kind of thing, right? Absolutely. But I've got a much wider lens in mine. Right. So what's going to be more useful from day to day? Are you shooting more extreme telephoto or... Are you right. shooting up close to your subject, doing indoor shots, things like that? I know, you know, being a family man myself, I would probably rather have 24 to 200 for most situations than 30 to 600. Right. I never drag telephotos around when we're shooting, mm -hmm. but I shoot a lot on the wide angle. Okay. Well, just something to consider for both cameras. It's a strength in both ways. There's no win. It depends yeah. on what you're shooting. Sports and wildlife, go with the G30. Day-to-day mm -hmm. -day or movie making, I'd go with the RX-10. Okay, now here's the thing though. This is a traditional camcorder and there was a lot of benefits associated with that. You know, especially when you compare it to a DSLR where you don't get autofocusing very easy, no mic options. I mean, I've got mic inputs here, beautiful stereo mics, good preamp in the sound. Yep. I've got nice rocker zoom. I've got autofocus during video. I mean, these are classic benefits of a camcorder. Right, and that's what's so interesting about the RX-10 is it has all of that too. Proper mic right. inputs, decent preamp, actually a really good stereo mic built in. I was really True. surprised by that. 
Uh, and the other thing too, we talk about how good the autofocus is in camcorders. Mm. They've never been that good. It's just the chip so small, the depth of field's enormous, right. so you can't see them hunting. You're in focus all the time. Yeah. yeah, right. This guy here, it's still a smaller chip than an SLR. Mm. So you're not gonna see that constant focus hunting back and forth. So we're still getting a little bit more leeway, but we can also get that separation when we want it. Yeah, you can get it when you want it, but you got the safety net of the smaller chip. This is the perfect sensor size for day-to-day -day shooting. And codec-wise between the two, I mean, I'm shooting standard MPEG here, right? Yeah. 1080p. You're shooting AVC HD yeah. to 60 frame per second, 24, 30. Exact same thing here, same data rate. You wouldn't hmm. be able to tell the files apart in a computer. Hmm. So, I know I'm holding the camcorder here tonight, okay? Sucker. But I know, but I agree with everything on the RX-10. I do think this is the future. I have one of these things at home. I can't remember the last time I used it. Yeah. Who uses these anymore? Absolutely, and I mean, it's something that we've noticed for the longest time. Mm. People aren't buying camcorders recently, and I don't use camcorders that often unless it's a big professional camera. And again, we're not talking about pro video. That's a totally different market. We're talking about family use, home video Just kind of stuff. Just regular consumer cameras. Exactly. Yeah, I'd say they're almost completely redundant. Like, that might be great if I was doing like a hunting show or Documentary you know, something like that. Something like that, that big that. telephoto yeah. lens helps you out. But I mean, if I was just going with the family on a vacation or something right. like that, it's a no brainer. I would bring this. And besides the stuff we talked about, mm -hmm. I get the cool still camera stuff. Like this thing is weather sealed. It's got an awesome viewfinder right. and it shoots 20 megapixel beautiful that's, still images. That's another big You're benefit. You're gonna have to drag a still camera Absolutely. around. There's no way that's gonna be the only thing in your bag. This is already bulky as it is. Yeah. I have to take a second camera. The only advantage is these things have are like projectors that come out of the, the right. screen. Yeah. I mean, it's stupid. They're getting desperate. <laughs> yeah, they really are. They really are. So yeah, you know, and price point wise, this is a high-end camera. It's not like we're comparing a crappy camcorder. $1,400. No. $1,400, these are high-end pieces of equipment. Yep. But again, this does everything better and yeah. more. I think they're gonna have to come up with something revolutionary in consumer cameras to right. make that market viable again. Sony's got their AX100 where they're mm. taking a one-inch chip, um, putting a zoom lens on it to regular video zoom. Right. But I would still take this guy over it. I actually prefer the form factor well, sure. for shooting video. And those cameras are large, and again, they're going to be clumsy when it comes to taking stills, right? Which, this again, gives that versatility. Yep. So yeah, I, don't, I agree. I think this is the future. Uh, we'll see if the market agrees with us, Jordan. Yeah, or the internet for or that matter. Or the internet, yeah. <laughs> and for that matter, if you guys enjoyed this kind of after dark discussion, I mean, we enjoyed it, right? It's yeah, nice. It's, it's romantic. nice. We get it's to hang out. It's just mysterious, you know, kind of yeah. dark light. No distractions. Whatever, right? Yeah, no distractions. Uh, if you like it, write in the comments you want to see more, and we'll do more. Yeah, right? absolutely. Right. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much.